This is Little Fingertips, the part of the programme where we show you how to make something by recycling stuff you'll find around your house. And with a little bit of Fingertips know-how, we're going to show you how to change boring old T-shirts like these into... These! Funky Fingertips Chop It Up Tops. They're smart. Yeah. Not only do they look fashionable, but they're really easy to make. So, whether you would like fringing and beading like this one... Or a double-up T-shirt like this one. Or add a bit of funky ruching, just like this. These are really worth trying out, you know, they're good. Yep, go and dig out your old T-shirt because it's time to give it a new lease of life. And we give this a fingertips difficulty rating of... Three. So, if you've got a long sleeve top and you really like the colour but the sleeves are too short and you have a T-shirt that you think would look cooler with long sleeves, then why not chop them up and mix them up. We'll show you how to do that in just a sec. Yes, but first of all, I'm going to show you how to make this great ruched effect. So what you need to do is draw two lines of fabric glue on your T-shirt about here. But the tricky bit is that those lines of glue have got to be on the inside. So open up your T-shirt and lay it as flat as you possibly can. Get the fabric glue and draw a line of glue from below the arm about a centimetre away from the seam, like so and then draw a second line of glue about a centimetre away from that first line of glue. Give the glue a shake, that's all right. All the way down, nice and neatly does it. And then you just want to lay the T-shirt out flat and leave those two lines of glue to dry. Nice one. Now, to make a double up top like the one that I'm wearing, you want to just cut off the neck of the long sleeve top and then make sure it's the right way round <laughs> and pop it into the neck of the T-shirt like this. Just tuck it in there and when you're happy with the positioning of it what you do is glue it in place now i think i'm ready to do my ruching so i've got my completely dry t-shirt here and grab your colored cord and tie either a large paper clip or a safety pin to one end now you need to thread this up one side of the t-shirt uh, between the seam and your first line of glue right the way up so it comes out of the armhole and then thread it back down between the two lines of glue. All the way down, keep going and it will eventually come out at the bottom. There it is. And then you need to hold on to the ends and ruch it up like this and then you can tie these two ends into a knot. Nicely done. Now that's finished, it's time to finish up the double up top. Now you've already stuck the neck in place now what you need to do is cut off the sleeves to the long sleeve top and stick them in place. So, let's just position this one just under the seam of the T-shirt. That should do it. Then get your glue and glue, glue it in place just like that. And just flatten it out and leave it to dry. And to make this one, just snip up the sleeves, thread on some beads and tie the ends. You'll find tops like these in all the high street shops, but why go out and buy one when you can recycle an old one at home for a fraction of the cost? Exactly. So next time you find an old T-shirt, don't chuck it out. Chop it up. And make a fingertips chop it up T-shirt. <laughs>
Now we give this a fingertips difficulty rating of two. Tasty. It's really easy, it looks great, and it is a good laugh to play. And we are going to show you how to make it. No, we are going to show them how to make it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you're going to be making this in your pyjamas, are you? Oh. Oh, much better. To make this tasty game, you need to eat a couple of pizzas first because you want to get your fingertips on two polystyrene pizza bases. So take one of the bases and draw around it on a nice big piece of corrugated card. Right the way around and cut this circle out. And when you have, divide it up using a ruler and cut it into eight equal pieces, just like pizza slices. Perfect. Next, you need to take one of your polystyrene bases and cut it up into lots of little bits needed for your pizza topping. Now, we've drawn some circles for pepperoni slices, some strips for pieces of green pepper and some little hoops for slices of olives. But you can make whatever toppings you like and then cut out all these shapes. And when you have done that, you also want to chop up all the other leftover bits of polystyrene into tiny pieces because this will make the tomatoey and cheesy bits of your pizza. Get them in a bowl and then add a generous amount of PVA glue. That should be enough. And give it a good mix. And then to this, you want to also add some flour. And the flour will thicken the whole thing up, make it nice and lumpy. That should do. Give it another mix there. Then lay out your card slices onto some plastic and put a generous amount onto each slice. And just spread it out. There we go. And do this to all the slices of your pizza. Then you'll be ready to add your bits of pepperoni, peppers and olives. And once the whole thing has dried, your pizza is ready for painting. So use different colours for the different toppings of your pizza. We're using a sort of pinky brown colour for the pepperoni slices. And how about some black paint to make the olives look good enough to eat? Yum, looks delicious. You now need to make the pizza's tray. So stick a rim of card around the outside edge of your other polystyrene base and this will stop the slices flying off when you spin your pizza game. Next, take a sweet tube and you're going to stick this to the bottom of the tray as part of the spinning mechanism. But first of all, you need to trim it down to size. Snip all the way along one edge like that. Give it a little squeeze together and fix it back in place with some sticky tape. So your tube is now narrower than it was before. Then with your scissors, make slits all the way around one end of the sweet tube. Carefully does it. You then want to fan these pieces out and you'll stick this onto the bottom of the tray and use lots of pieces of sticky tape to make sure it's secure. And then you can paint the pizza tray any colour you want. And now for the final bit, that's the base. This is really easy. All you need is a yoghurt pot, a bit of modelling clay, a piece of card and a pencil, and make sure that the card is bigger than your yoghurt pot. The modelling clay, that's going to weight the whole thing down. So place that on the card, yoghurt pot on top, and just push your pencil all the way through, like that, through the modelling clay and into the card, and then secure it in place with some sticky tape like that, there and there. And then you can paint it to give it a nice, neat finish. And when you've done that, you're ready to play the game. Just remember to tack your dares to the underside of each pizza slice, but only use a small bit of tack, because once you've chosen a slice, you remove the dare. So then if you pick a slice and the dare's already gone, you can breathe a sigh of relief until your next turn. Now, if you would like to have a go at making your own spinning pizza roulette, then why don't you go to the Fingertips website? Just click on Party and you'll find everything that you need to know. So, sleep tight and treat your mates to a sleepover party, fingertips style. Well, Stephen, your turn. Here we go, come on. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, this one. OK, let's have a look. What? I am not doing that.
This is Makeover Fingertips, the part of the programme where we show you how to make something by recycling stuff that you probably find around your home. So what about this lot? A load of animal cutouts from old magazines, some googly eyes, scraps of ribbon, jewels and pink card. Not that inspiring, but with a bit of fingertips know-how, we're going to show you how to transform these old things into this, a glitzy fingertips glam card, ideal for those special occasions. They look pricey, but they cost practically nothing to make. And we give the glam cards a fingertips difficulty rating of one. Nice and simple, so why not get glitzy and get gluing? Take an A4 piece of bright colour card and fold it in half to create your card shape. Next, cut out a cute pet or animal from an old calendar or magazine. This cat's great and we've even given it this scalloped edge. Next, glue your animal onto the front of your card, like so. Then add a couple of googly eyes on top of the real eyes. So, if you're making a card for a boy, stop there. However, if you're sending it to a girl, glam it up even more with these things. Stick on jewels. Just add them wherever you like. I think a pretty pendant necklace would look good. And what about adding on this old bow I found? And when you've finished, it should look something like this. You can see we've added a border and written happy birthday on the front using 3D paint. And you can use this technique to make all sorts of fabulous cards. How about cutting the coloured card to a more fitting shape like we've done with this one? Or check out the snail. I think that is the perfect use for those googly eyes. You've got to admit, they're better than anything you can buy in card shops. So why not recycle some out-of-date magazines and turn them into some fabulous, up-to-date fingertips glam cards? This is Little Fingertips, the part of the programme where we show you how to make something by recycling stuff you'll probably have lying around at home. And today it's the turn of this, a boring old file. We've all got one for keeping notes and for schoolwork, but with a little bit of fingertips know-how, we're going to show you how to turn it from this into this. The Fingertips Style File. It's the latest in stationary fashion with all of the coolest accessories. By making use of your old denims and creating this fashionable file, you can become a student with style. Just check out these ready-made pockets, handy for storing your notepads and other equipment. And the belt loops are ideal places for attaching all sorts of bits and pieces. We've used this one for a handy pen chain. And we give the fingertip style file a difficulty rating of two. So, to make yourself a style file, you need to get hold of an old pair of jeans or any trousers made from a tough material. Lay them out flat in front of you and place your boring old file opened out on top of them, with the top hem of the jeans showing over the top, and then cut off the jeans just below the bottom of the file. Now, you'll probably find that your jeans are a little bit narrower than your opened out file, so you need to make some cuts up the front of the trouser legs, a few centimetres in from the seams, about here, and here, like that. And as you can see, I've also cut along the inside of the waistband. So you need to place the file back on top of your jeans, tucking the file under that hem and stick down all of these edges. And you can use some fabric glue for this. So along the bottom and edges of the file, and you might want to trim off some of the bulky bits as you go along and then leave it to dry. And once it has dried, you can neaten it off inside by edging it with some ribbon. So now you're ready to add all of your fashion accessories. The pockets are already in place to store all your bits and pieces. Just pop in a notepad and a large paper clip. And these belt loops are perfect for attaching your key rings and other decorations. Absolutely fabulous, aren't they? So why don't you give your file a fashion makeover with the little fingertips style file. Wow, parachuting's fantastic! How great is this? You're a bit quiet, Naomi. <laughs> Not worried or anything, are you? No, but you should be. Why? Well, 
At least I remember my parachute. You won. This is Fun Fingertips, the part of the programme where we show you something that's fun to make and fun to do. And today, we're going parachuting. The aim of the game is to parachute a parrot onto a leafy nest and try and avoid a hungry hippo's mouth. Hey! Oh, well done, Stevie. This game has a fingertips difficulty rating of two. So, there's no excuse not to jump in and make one. Now, for the parrot's parachute, what you want to do is get yourself a plastic bag and cut a 30 centimetre square, and then you need some cotton. You need 30 centimetre bits of that, and you want to stick one bit to each corner. Like that. And once that's done, you're ready to make your parrot. A brightly coloured wooden bead makes a perfect body, so just carefully push all four lengths of cotton through the bead, and then add a smaller bead for the head, and that slots in nicely. Now we've made a parrot's beak out of coloured foam and stuck that on with some double-sided sticky tape and also stuck on some wobbly eyes as well. And of course, a parrot is not complete without its colourful plumage. So, a couple of coloured feathers. Let's put a red and pink one in this bead there. And a yellow one can pop in the top just like that. And when your parrot is ready to parachute, you need to make some targets, like these leafy nests, and they're very, very easy to make. You just need to cut out three different sized circles of coloured card. But to make them a bit leafy, you can cut out some green card leaves and outline them with some black marker pen to make them really stand out in the jungle. And when you're happy with everything in place, you can stick it down to give you that nice leafy nest. And now for the hungry hippo's mouth, and these look really good, and they're really easy to make. What you need are two baked potato punnets, or fruit punnets, they work as well, because they've got a brilliant built-in hippo shape just there. Now, to make the mouth, you put one on top of the other one with the shallow end meeting the deeper end, and you want to hinge them together with some strong sticky tape, like that. And there you have the hungry hippo's mouth. Two poly balls make great hippopotamus eyes and you can use some sticky pads to fix those in place. And make some tiny hippo ears out of coloured foam or card. Ah, oh, he's starting to take shape. Which looks funny. <laughs> now, for the nostrils. For these, you want to add a couple of film canister lids there and there. And you could also add some foam teeth. Just pop those in place. And why not make a big hippo tongue in it goes and this is made out of pink foam and there is your hippo complete and you can add as many leafy nests and hippos as your playing area will fit and why not make some lakes for your hippos and for extra parachuting fun why don't you give the nest and hippos scores so if you land on a nest then you bag yourself 100 points but if you land on a hippo oh dear you lose all your points so be careful Right, Stephen, ready to get parachuting? I'm ready. Oh. 